Hi, everyone. It's Dawn Fisher and Mama Kitty. Missed her mom because she was gone. Um, welcome to Floss Tube number 63. Again, I'm Dawn Fisher with Morning Glory Needleworks. And welcome to my 63rd Floss Tube video. And as always, thank you to everybody who subscribes, comments, likes my videos. I'm going to give my little intro blurb. Um, as always, Links are posted in the description um, below the video or wherever it's at on your how you're watching it. And I also break my videos into chapters. So like this, this video, we're doing Stitch of the Month. So if you've already watched the video, you want to come back later, you can jump right to Stitch of the Month. So what happens is there there'll be each chapter will be listed and then there will be a timestamp next to that chapter. So if you just click on that timestamp, it will take you directly to the video. Also, there um, are links to the Morning Glory Needleworks Etsy shop, Instagram, Stitch of the Month Facebook group, Morning Glory Needleworks Facebook group, Buy Me a Coffee, and a few other things. Um, there's a link, there's going to be a link to um, a new pattern I have come, I, that just came out. So it's the 1st of August, 2024. So let's get going. <laughs> Things have been going well, but the next month is going to be really, really busy. As you know, I talked about it in my last video. I was at Stitch Florida 2024, the new retreat in Orlando. And now next week, I am going to Stitch Jacksonville, which is a retreat in Jacksonville, Florida, which is about four hours um, from where I live. That's always a fun retreat, so I'll be reporting on that next time. And then, like, just a few days after I return from that, I'm headed to Atlanta for the EGA National Seminar there. Um, and I'm very excited about attending uh, EGA National. I haven't been for a few years. I'm going to be vending there. Um, they're doing pop-up shops this time. Instead of having just one shop vend, they're having pop-up shops. And there'll be a whole bunch of different vendors there. Um, instead of just merchandise night, which only used to be like two hours on one night and was crazy, um, the shops will be there all day. So you'll be able to visit. So I'm going to be set up Wednesday and Thursday, and I'm going to have a lot of stuff there. Um, I'll have my patterns, some flower frogs, um, salt cellars, maybe some antique samplers for sale, some of my antique um, sewing tools I may be selling. I haven't decided what all I'm going to bring yet, but I need to get on that. So um, needless to say, it's going to be very busy. Um, also, so the first two days I'll be vending, then I'm actually going to take a class, which I'm really excited about. It's just a small project, a one day class. So I'll be showing you that. And then on Saturday, I signed up for open stitching. And, um, so I'm just going to be able to spend the day stitching, talking to people. I'm hoping I'll have some friends there. Yes, I know life is rough, isn't it, mama? She's so teeny, look at her. She's just a teeny little baby and she's not very, oh my goodness, have, oh, she got her, she got her claw caught in my shirt. There we go. Okay, sweetie. There you go. Oh my goodness. There, now I'm covered in cat hair. She had her claw caught in my shirt, which is why she was yelling so much and she wants some treats. So anyway, um, so I'll probably record my next floss tube when I get back from Stitch Jacksonville, which will be a little bit early. I'll probably still have it post on the 15th, though I can set it to um, post on a certain date. So you're going to get a full re report on that retreat. And then for the floss tube on September 1st, I'll talk about EGA National, which um, I'm sure I'll have a lot to talk about after that. And then... Um, so like I said, the next few weeks, next August is going to be crazy busy. Then um, after that, I'm going to have almost two months off where I don't um, have to go anywhere, do anything. So I'm hoping to get settled again, get more stuff unpacked, maybe get some more designs going. I have so many ideas. 
um, some people are interested in having me come teach. So I need to get some uh, proposals um, done up. So that'll be nice to be able to relax. So my poor kitties um, miss me so much. Poor mama, because she's on meds. She has a thyroid issue. She has to have um, meds twice a day. So I can't leave her at home because even if I had a cat sitter come over twice a day, um, they usually, the cats hide. Mama Kitty's gotten a little bit better since I've been boarding her. But um, if somebody comes over and mama doesn't come out, they can't put the medicine out for her because somebody else will eat it. So anyway, I have to board her at the vet and they're really nice. I talked to them about that because I, I feel bad leaving her there. I used to board her with Glinda because they were best friends, my kitty Glinda. But unfortunately, Glinda, um, I had to let Glinda go um, a few months ago. Um, she she had a lot of um, medical issues anyway. So she's no longer with us. So poor mama has to go by herself. But I talked to the vet and the um, some of the techs and they said all the kitties back in the cages get a lot of attention because when the vet techs, when they're stressed or something, they go and cuddle the kitties. And I'm sure mama likes that. And they give her lots of treats and stuff. So anyway, um, and the other two stay here at the house because they're okay. They're brother and sister. They're very bonded. So they're okay here. They're not alone. And, um, but I'm I'm just going to be gone so much. And Bustopher, it was so so funny the first day when i came home i drove home from orlando he was like on me and he's big he's a big boy and he was like laying on me and across my laptop and everything and then i went to bed that night and i got up the next morning and he had brought me like four different toys and put them on the bed next to me his toys that he carries around so it it was very sweet um, so I'll probably, because I'm going to be gone so much, I'm going to have to hire somebody to come over and check on the kitties. But other than that, they do fine by themselves. I have my electric litter box, which I love, and they have a self feeder and a water fountain. So they're all good. So anyway, um, that's what's going on in my life at home here. Lots of stuff. Um, I do have news. This is a class update. I had talked about I was going to be teaching my uh, spool of stitches for Stitcher's Hideaway. That class has been postponed, not canceled, but postponed. And um, I'm very excited about where the class is going. I mean, it's still going to be at the same place, but what's going to happen <clears throat> for that class? So I'm really excited about that. So I hope next time on uh, my next video to have more news and give you the official um, update on that. So that'll be fun. Um, so again, it wasn't canceled, just kind of postponed for a few months. So I'm very excited. Um, I mentioned this before. I was at the Stitch Florida 2024 retreat in Orlando, which was wonderful. It was their first retreat. And I must say they did a great job. Um, it's hosted by the Fanciful Flamingo and the Proper Stitcher, and they did a wonderful job taking care of us vendors and the, all the people that attended the retreat, and it was huge. I'm going to, I've got like a little PowerPoint presentations because I wanted to show all the pictures and um, things that went on, not everything that went on, but just so you can get an idea of how big it was. There was, I think there was 150 people there. So it was pretty big. And then um, in the vending room, there was a lot of vendors. So I have a few, a picture, couple pictures of um, how the vendors were set up and uh, what all happened. I actually wasn't part of the retreat. I was just vending. So I didn't get to take part in a lot of the fun things that went on. They had some a few little like mini classes. My friend um, Jenny Messini actually taught a class, I believe it was on how to like sign your um, needlework pieces. 
And what she did, she had actually contacted me because she had a little design she wanted charted and she was having a hard time. She was busy and didn't have time to do it. So she just sent it to me and I quick like charted it up. And this is a very cute little chart. And this is the card she handed out at the um, at the retreat during her talk. So she gave me a couple of these wonderful cards. I think I may steal this idea. This is a nice little um, free chart. But so I know she gave a little talk. And then on one day, um, Tiger Lily Designs did a class on courting and gave everybody this um, uh, handout, which was really nice on how to use this is the Krynic cording tool. I don't have one of those, but I would like to get one. Or you can use a drill. There's all sorts of, I'm sure if you look it up online, there's got to be tons of YouTube videos on how to make cording. But I thought that was really nice that they had the, that she demonstrated that. And I was actually out in the stitching room for that because, um, the shop was only open certain hours, the shopping vendors were only open like from 10 to four or 10. Yeah, I think it was 10 to four and then they close or 10 to two and then they closed for a few hours and then open back up in the evening. So um, we closed for a few hours and they were nice enough. Um, Alicia and Annie were nice enough to let me come out into the stitching room for a little while and visit with my friends and that kind of stuff. So it, it was nice, so it was kind of fun. I know they had another class. I can't remember another little mini class each day. They also did um, gift exchanges where you stitched a little, I think it was Christmas in July, people stitched a piece, put it in a bag, and then everybody drew numbers and went out and picked a bag and got a, a wonderful little stitched piece. So um, that was fun. Of course, I did not participate. Um, next year, I am planning on attending the retreat. They've already given us the dates. It'll be next September of 2025. I already have it on my calendar. So next year, because it looked like the retreat itself was so much fun. When I signed up, I wasn't sure what was going on. That was way before I sold my house and all that. So I wasn't sure, you know, what I was going to do. So next year, I'm actually going to vend and be at the retreat so I can um, participate in everything. So that should be fun. I'm really looking, um, looking forward to it. Um, I did well selling at the retreat. All my flower frogs are gone. Uh, well, no, not all of them. The ones with the dishes are gone. I sold, I had two square ones, which were really unusual. I'd never seen those before. And those sold immediately. Uh, I also had a big giant flower frog that um, a lot of people were looking at and finally somebody bought it. So that was good. But I sold a, a lot of the flower frogs, the little glass salt cellars. I sell that you can put, I have wool balls you can put in them to put your pins and needles and things in. Anyway, I sold a lot of that. I sold quite a few patterns. I actually sold out of one of them. Um, and I I did a few wholesale uh, sales and I'm talking to a shop I'm not going to go into details, but we are talking about um, having me come teach there. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so that was fun. I also, I stayed at a different hotel because I was rooming by myself. So I found another hotel, which was pretty nice. It wasn't bad. Um, and the rate, you know, was much lower. So when you're by yourself. Um, so anyway, but it was fun. I did because I was in the room with all the other vendors, that's very dangerous for anybody with any money. I was very good. I did not spend all my money I made. I did buy a few things. So I brought those. I wanted to show you the few little things I bought. Like I said, I didn't buy a lot because I'm trying to cut back, but sometimes you gotta. And also um, the people in the retreat itself, a lot of people people bring gifts for other people at their table. Some people bring enough gifts to give to everybody. So I got this. I happened to be sitting at the table when, um, I think her name's uh, K 
Carrie from Tiger Lily Designs, the one that did the courting class. She was handing these out. So I got one of these. It's just a cute little Life's a Stitch, just a little like an Altoid type tin. So that was really cute. So I got one of those. And because she was set up very close to me, I had to go over and look at her stuff. So she was selling these lotion bars. And this one is lavender. And it it has a lotion bar in it. So you rub it on your hands and it, it kind of melts into your hands. And it smells really good. It smells like lavender. And then if you bought one of these, she also had designs so that when this is gone, you can stitch this and put it on top. She had two different designs. I really liked the tomato one. She had another one that was a little flower, a basket with some flowers, but I decided to get the tomato one. So it's really cute and it, it was free. It just came with this. So I haven't tried this stuff yet, but I, I will. Um, I also bought, she was selling these Life's a Stitch plastic um, drink cups. You can never have too many drink cups. This will be good for coffee at retreats and stuff. So and it's pink. It's pink. So I really like that. So I bought one of those. I also bought, this is really cool. It came in a little bag. And what it is, it's like a floss ring. So you can put your uh, floss fobs on it. But this is wax, beeswax. And it's got a rose, it's hard to see, but it's got like a rose design, a 3D rose design. So you can uh, run your threads over it and make them smoother. So I just, I've never seen one like that. So I had to get that. So I think that's everything I got from her. And um, people were there from uh, a woman with uh, Saju. Um, items the stitch stitcherist i think her name the name is anyway she sells handmade scissors i i wanted scissors but i just got three new pairs so i decided not to get scissors but this is a little um pin box and there was all different ones with all different designs and all different things in them um i got the one with the wizard most of them had like women doing different things. This one actually has little um, straight pins in it, but they had ones with safety pins, ones with little, um, oh God, what are they? Like violet pastels, little candies, and some other kind of um, pins with like a triangle at the top. But I bought those and then I was talked into <laughs> or convinced I needed to buy these are reproductions of um, books with patterns in them. And she had a lot of them. And there were some with alphabets, but I decided to get these. Aren't these wonderful? I just love all these different, oops. And the book is beautiful. She had a monkey made out of this fabric and I wanted it so bad, but I just couldn't spend the money. And um, like, this is the Sphinx. And it just says different um, things in French underneath. But um, I got that one. And then this is, that's number 906. You see it on the top, 906. And this one is number 657. And this one has bands, bands and borders, which I loved a lot of really different, unique bands and borders. So, and that's, look at that, isn't that beautiful? So that was, I think that's about all I spent, all I bought there. Um, but I did, um, well, I'll show you. I'm gonna do a quick change over here and let me show you some pictures so you can see how, um, what was going on. If you've never been to a retreat, you really need to go. It's um, a lot of fun. And even if you go by yourself, I go by myself all the time. Now I know a lot of people, but when I started going, I didn't know anybody. And I've roomed with people I didn't know, and now we're friends. 
So at all different retreats, I did that in Cocoa Beach, and now we're friends. Debbie and I are friends. So let me um, go to my little PowerPoint and show you um, some fun, fun things that were going on. All right, so this is the lobby of the beautiful um, embassy suites where the um, retreat was at. And these are at least most of the attendees. I don't know if it was all of them, but like I said, there was 150 of us. Um, I think it was Alicia's husband that went up. I think he was on the second floor. He had to get up that high to be able to get everybody in the picture. So what a great group of people, what fun we had. Um, this is everybody. And then down in the front center by the table is Alicia and Annie. So Alicia from the uh, Fanciful Flamingo and Annie from the Proper Stitcher. So what um, next, if I can get this to change. So here is the stitching room. You can see it's really long and skinny, and this is where everybody was. There's all these tables, and yes, it looks really long, and it is really long. <laughs> it was uh, like every ballroom they had all in, made into one big, huge room. And then uh, along the sides were tables with gifts. They did door prizes and the exchanges, and but the, see, there's little tables with groups of people, and now this is my table I had set up and you can see I was next to the door to go out to the stitching room and I had all my designs set up. Um, I only had one table, so it was pretty tight, but I got some new stands and they seemed to work pretty good. And then I had all my patterns in a rack in the back. And so anyway, and you can see all the flower frogs around and the milk glass items. And like I said, all that stuff sold. I. I have a few flower or a few um few of the glass flower frogs left and a few of the salt sellers. But anyway, so that was my table. And then this is the rest of the room. This is looking, we're looking at the back of my table with all my bags underneath. But these are the other, uh, some of the other vendors. So it was it there was quite a bit here. Uh needle orts, the shop, I think they're in. Alamante Springs, somewhere near Orlando, but they came in and they had so much stuff that every day they changed what they were selling. So they would have big lines of waiting, you know, to buy their um, whatever they had for that day. And this is my biggest fan, Diane McClure. She brought me this. Um, she won, I did a giveaway and she requested this pattern. She won and requested this pattern and she stitched it. This is Victorian Silhouettes and she stitched it and it's beautiful. I'm gonna show you um, my version um, when I'm done with the PowerPoint here, but um, the, I was so excited to see it. I love when people show me their, um, what they've done with my designs and uh, she had it on the table they have a a brag table where you can bring in um, your work and lay it out and she had it on the table there she made it into a beautiful bell pull so I was very excited and uh, her and I talked quite a bit so it was nice to see her there and of course when it all was said and done we went out to what was it Cooper's Hawk a group of us did for dinner, and this was my kind of my dinner. I had a, I had a bowl of um, it's like seafood bisque that was delicious. Or actually, I had a cup because it was pretty filling. This was very filling. This is a Bloody Mary, and it had shrimp and andouille sausage, an olive, um, a pickle, and a tomato on it, and it was very good. Now the beer it came with this little side of beer and I don't like beer. I tasted it, but I don't like beer. So I did not drink it. Um, a couple of people also tasted it, but nobody drank, excuse me, nobody drank it. So that was, that was delicious. Uh, but the Bloody Mary was delicious and I'd been craving one for a while. And then 
after that, I was stuffed, but we all had dessert anyway. And I had uh, salted caramel creme brulee. Oh my God, that was so good. I love creme brulee. And um, you know what? The most expensive thing I had was this um, Bloody Mary, but it was delicious and I don't regret it. So, cause sometimes you deserve that. So that's it. I just wanted to make sure you kind of saw what the retreat was like. I should have done a video or something. I know there's videos online, but you may have to be a member of the group to, um, oops, to uh, participate in that. So I'm gonna pause. Um, like I said, we had, we had a good time. I, um, I just, I, I recommend uh, going to retreats and I wanted to show you, this is, I showed you the picture of Diane's version of this, but this is mine. Hers was done on Ada, which is nice. I, it was very small. So it was probably 18 or 20 Ada. I forgot to ask her because, or 16, I don't know, because this is 32 over one. So hers was bigger, but not huge. So obviously she did it on a very small count, but I love the colors she chose. Um, they were uh, beautiful. I also wanted to show, this is, I talked about this in, um, I talked about this, uh, I think last time, and I had, or no, the time before, and I had a book and I have finished charting this and it is now available in the Morning Glory Needleworks Etsy shop. So I debuted it at Stitch Florida and sold quite a few. And now it's available in my Etsy shop. There are links. It's available in print, which will be mailed to you or as a digital download. So you can buy it and have it instantly. So anyway, this is Franica, Franica Nieslerin. And it was stitched in 1800. You can see it's got this Bargello stitch. There are withdrawn threads where you actually pull out a thread. So it needs to be done on a linen or an even weave. You actually remove a thread of the linen and then weave in a floss. So there's three areas of that. And I give you directions on that. There's one, one little eyelet stitch there. So again, this is now available in the Morning Glory Needleworks Etsy shop, and there's um, uh, a link to it so you can get to it. All right, it's that time. It's time for Stitch of the Month. So this month, where's my directions here? I decided to go, last time was a little more complicated. So this time I decided to go with something a little um, easier, famous last words, so this is got too many pieces of paper here. This time we are doing a half rose. So this is a fun stitch, um, fairly easy. It's just straight lines and then a little stitch over the top just to kind of hold everything in place. So again, this directions, if you join the Stitch of the Month Facebook group, this will be available as a PDF through that group. I post these as PDFs in the group. I've also got the Stitch of the Month sampler for 2024, where if you have a little narrow piece of linen, you can um, stitch your designs. It gives every month. And what I have here is my sample. Now I've been doing this since 2022. So I had this big long scrap of linen. Oh, they're mowing the lawn outside. Anyway, so this is Stitch of the Month for 2022. I have a thread hanging. Stitch of the Month for 2023. And now on to 2024. So here is Stitch of the Month. This is 28 count. I am working with Sulky Thread on this. So what I'm gonna do is um, show you on PowerPoint, talk about the stitch, and then I will demonstrate it as usual. So hold on and let me switch over and I will be right back. Okay, so here is the half road stitch. And like I said, it's a fairly simple stitch, famous last words, but what you're gonna do, the stitch is four threads wide and four threads high. 
So you're gonna come up at one, which is in the lower left corner, count four threads to the right, four threads up and go down at two. Then after that, each stitch is either gonna be one thread to the right or one thread to the left, each step. So step three, you come up one thread to the right of one and go down at four, which is one thread to the left of two. Then five is a vertical stitch, one thread to the right of three, and it goes down one thread to the left of four. And you just continue around until you've done through nine, 10. So that's a half road. So now a full road, you would go all the way around and complete the square. Then what we're gonna do is a little tacking stitch over the center. So you're gonna come up at 11, which is two threads above nine and one thread to the left. And then you're gonna go over two threads or over the center of your stitch and go down at 12. And that's it, that's one stitch. Then you'll see that step 13 shares a hole with step nine. So all of these stitches share holes all the way across. So um, just work, <clears throat> excuse me, work your next stitch the same until you've worked the correct amount across the row. So that's it for that. Hang on and I will um, demonstrate. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate this stitch. So I've come up at what would be one. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. There we go. And try and focus. So this is step one. So I'm gonna count four threads to the right. One, two, three, four, and then four threads up. One, two, three, four. So there is step one two. It's just like a big half cross. So next we're going to come up at three, which is one thread to the right of one and go down at four, which is one thread to the left of two. Now five, six is a vertical thread in the center. And then seven, eight, nine, 10. So there you are. So now we're gonna do our little tacking stitch. So I'm gonna count two threads up from step nine and one thread to the left. I'm gonna go over the center two threads. You will be one thread in and do a little tacking stitch to hold it down. And that's your stitch. So you, you'll come up in the same hole as nine for your next stitch. So there's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and just continue to complete all the um, long stitches. And then we're gonna do a tacking stitch across the center again. Do our little tacking stitch. So that's that. Now, if you want, I did not do this, but I've done this in some of my other ones. So your next stitch will come up here again in this hole. But if you want a little more decoration, you could use another color of thread and do a little upright cross here in the center. Do all your um, half roads across. If you don't like that open area and do a little upright cross over two threads in the center to fill that in. So that's kind of fun. Okay, so that's what you would do is just do these little upright crosses in the center in another color and that'll give a little pop, pop of color. So I'm going to stop sharing and here I am back again. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's it for um, Floss Tube 63. I hope you enjoyed everything. Um, I kind of cut it a little short because... Um, I actually had quite a bit to talk about. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the retreats and stuff and the new stitch of the month. 
Again, um, join the Stitch of the Month Facebook group to, um, to get those um, stitches. Um, be sure to subscribe to be notified whenever a new video comes out. They do come out on the 1st and the 15th of the month. I do that because the new Stitch of the Month is always on the 1st. And then on the 15th, I talk more about other stuff. I'm hoping, um, well, next time I'll be coming home from another retreat. And so I'll have other wonderful goodies um, to show you. And let me know if there's some other stitches you would like to learn or stitches you're having problems with. I'll be happy to help. Um, I may learn a new stitch to be able to help you. So as always, all the links are posted in the description comments section. So if there's um, something you wanna see, if, um, you want to go to my Etsy shop and see my designs, there's a link there. So thank you again for watching and I will see you on the 15th of August.